Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake grand order video. I messed that up, but thankfully I don't, this is a, one of the story times, so I don't have to go back and fix it. But what are we doing today? Well, this event's coming up on the 3rd. So I figure it's a good enough time as now to talk about it on a random Friday. So there we go. Nanmei Yumihara Hakuden, or the Dog Chronicles, it's going to be called in the NA version. That's the upcoming event that we're going to be going through, and I'm going to go over the event. So there you go. Let's start, huh? All right, first things you need to know, this starts on the third. Maintenance will start on the third, and when maintenance ends, that will be the fourth, and that is technically when the event says. So even though it says fourth, maintenance starts on the third, event starts on the fourth, unless you got a different time zone than me, in which case, I don't know. <laughs> but if you, uh, for the most people, it will probably be that time. I assume, anyway. I don't actually know that much. Um... It should last uh, an extremely long time. In JP, it lasted from the 29th all the way to the 20th, which was like three weeks. So I expect it to last just as long. It would go from the 3rd to the 24th, which would make sense because that's pretty on the cusp of the anniversary and stuff. Um, in order to actually participate in it, you need to have cleared Sin, which is Lost Belt 3. If You need to get to Lost Belt 3. If you're not on Lost Belt 3... You'll know, because if you're still on the Singularities, you are not on you are not on uh, Lost Belt stuff. Lost Belt is part two stuff. Get to part two, beat the third one, and then you can join in on this. Chances are you will not make it in time if you are still on Camelot or stuff like that. But maybe if you rush it, you can. It's possible. Uh, the in event information, here it is. The main event. This is how it's going to be kind of structured. So at the beginning, we'll have the prologue, main quests, and some free quests. Um, and then the next day, the main quest, it will unlock based off of how many points you have. You need at least 20,000 points to unlock it, and then you'll unlock the next free quest. And then, uh, you'll need 110,000 points, and then you'll unlock the next one, and then 310,000 points. Unlock the next one, and then 420, and then boom, it's done. Collect as much points as possible. So obviously with that, what type of event is this? It's pretty easy. It's a point rewards <laughs> type of event with some other stuff in it. So, first of all, the, here's the things that we're going to be collecting. This is the reward system that we got here, which in Japan they were called Ruffian Points, so we'll be interested to see what they call it for us over here. I'm not 100% sure. And then there'll be also Ten Ten Tamari, Chewing Rope, and White Meal. These are the other grind materials that are not grind materials, but the other drops that will happen during the event. Heartbreaker is the event CE that you can use to get more points. The Mount Fuji Pilgrimage gives you more Ten Ten which means that this is the gold drops, this is the silver drops, and this is the bronze drops, which means this uses the three-star CE for the event, the four-star, and the five-star. These three are all banner CEs, and this one you will be able to get in, in the, um, through playing the event itself. You can obtain command codes and various other stuff. Now there's a dog system where you collect dog warriors and you befriend them in the main quest, and you can send them off in expeditions, and you need to give them a certain item for them to actually go on it. And don't worry about losing the item. They give it back to you after they finish their expedition. But in order for them to actually start it, they need to make sure that you have that material on you. I think it's only one. So make sure to have it on there. Um, if a dog warrior sends on an expedition where he actually has a big compatibility with, then the expedition time is shortened. There's no limit on them. You can set up a return notification for your phone to let you know, hey, my dog is back. And then after the event, you obviously can't go on any more expeditions, but if you come back, um, but if you have any ongoing expeditions, those will finish, and then you can collect the rewards from them and so forth. Easy enough stuff, and then each day a main quest will be unlocked. Very simple stuff. The event bonus for this specific event will be the two five stars that will be on the two, the two new five stars, which will have 100% damage and 50% bond bonus. Then we got some other dogs up in here. Bargist, uh, Izzo, Lobo, and for some reason Hakusai. 50% damage to them and 20% to Bond. And then 30% damage bonus and 20% Bond to all Archer Servants. So this is another one where I think it looks like MASH isn't actually going to get a bonus in it. Funny enough. Event CEs uh, and uh, Command Codes. The free CE will be Heartbreaker, which gives Sure Hits, Arts, Buster, and Starting NP 30%. And also it has some insane boobart going on here on Sukabihime here. Just 
that it's a wonder to behold what happens when you put them in the air. Uh, it ignores evasion, increases arts performance by 4%, increases buster performance by 4%, and then starts battle with 30% MP. And when you max limit break it, you'll have 6% to arts, buster, and a starting uh, battle with 50% NP. Probably best on a unit that <laughs> obviously uses arts and buster at the same time. Um, but it's also pretty good for new players because this is a 50% starting NP, so not bad. And in terms of event, that also makes it a little bit easier for grinding as well when you get to start with 30% NP. It's a little bit better than when it's a zero, a zero percenter. <laughs> At least I think it is. And you get 30% more uh, ruffian points, and if you maximum break it, it's 60%, and obviously that is only applied to this event. The event command codes is Blade of Love without uh, destination to make sure that no one can fight her in the boob game. Here's Raiko. Card damage against Demonic, plus 15%. And then card damage against Sky of Earth Servants, except for Pseudo and Demi, also up 15%. So damn, you're just going to be doing a lot on that one card to specifically a Diamond Sky or Earth Servant. Demonic Sky or Earth Servant. Uh, paintbrush of the, t uh, the Train, I was about to say of the Titan. Attacking with engraved card, gain two crit stars, store 300 HP, and then apply curse, uh, 100 on self. And then Cavill number two, look at the little dog boy here, he's back in the command code. If engraved on a buster card, a card uh, gives card star absorption up by 10%, and then cards crit damage up 10% as well. 50% to the star absorption and 10% to the crit damage, just in case I said that all funky like. And then in terms of game updates, uh, Lobo is going to be getting a strengthening, and Izzo is going to get a strengthening. Um, Lobo definitely needs it. His monster of strength will go into Homesick White Wolf, which I'll look into that more when we actually uh, look at the banner units, and Izzo gets an upgrade to his NP. The Da Vinci Workshop also will get this snazzy outfit for Izzo over here, because Japan loves Izzo, so Izzo gets a lot of costume dresses. <laughs> Uh, requirement, clear Fuyuki, Okada Izzo's costume dress, quest, unlock, permit, trade limit 1, free if you clear Solomon. And this is the old Hakusai uh, trial quest stuff as well. The condition has changed. Uh, it's free if you clear Salem. If you exchange the quest, unlock, permit before clearing Solomon or this, you will obviously get this back. When it becomes, when it becomes free for you, something like that. Shop. In terms of the 1010 Tamari, which is the 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 gold one, right? I think typically this is the gold one. I don't remember. <laughs> one moment as I look at the... Yes, this is the gold one, just to be sure. <laughs> Let me look at this again. Okay, the, for the gold, which is the 1010 Tamari, you can exchange them in the shop. And inside the shop, you'll find two of the, the event CE, one lore, um, 10 mirrors, um, 20 of the, of the plots of the Black Tallow, uh, 20 of the Magatama, 30 Unforgettable Ashes, which is the brand new, um, material, so if you pulled any of the dudes from Trom, they need this, badly. They need more than 30, but I'll take 30. And then also there's Saber Monuments, Archer Monuments, and Rider Monuments, 20 each for gold. And then you'll have two Golden Foes for both types, Attack Up and HP Up along with a code remover and uh, the always available 10,000 QP. Uh, grand total of 3,800 3, if you want to get this entire shop out. Chewing rope, you'll need a grand total of 3,400 to get everything here. You can exchange one time for one of the CEs for the event CE. A trade one for a lore, uh, Dawn Light Reactor Core, you can get 20 of those, along with 20 of Forbidden Pages, Giant's Ring, uh, Idrisil Seed, and then Saber, Archer, and Rider statues, along with a Golden Foe for, I believe it is, Attack? I think I say this every single time, and I never remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have bad memory when it comes to, it is Attack. Okay, the Foe that looks up is the Attack one, got it. Um, and the Code Remover. And finally, White Meal. Uh, delicious white meal, which you'll need a grand total. For this one, you'll need a grand total of 3,400, which is the least of all of them. And a grand total of 3,900 if you want to get everything in the white meal, which will feature one of the Heartbreaker CE the, for the events. And then 20 uh, Antiquity Bells, Arrowheads, 30 Bones, 30 Chains, 30 Fluid, 
uh, the HP, gold info, uh, 20 of the attack and HP, silver foe, uh, 55 EXP, 104 EXP, 100 silver EXP, a code remover, and then nothing else. But that will require a grand total of 3,900 to get everything in there. There'll be, obviously, main quests, free quests, point reward. The point rewards, there's at least four tickets here. If all you're interested in is getting as much, because obviously to complete the event, you would only need like what it said there, which is like, what, 400k? Yeah, 400k. So obviously there's still stuff beyond 400k. And if you all you wanted were the tickets, it looks like the last ticket drops at 1.75 million. And there are four in total, because there's one right here. Um, two right here. I've, there's one. I know the other one's here. Maybe the other one's not here. And then there's two in the early goings. Yeah, one right here, one right here. 100k, 200k, uh, 300k. And then you would think it'd be <laughs> the next one would be at 400k. Not the no, no. You have to go into 1.75 million <laughs> if you want the full thing. Obviously, you want to get everything on here. But if for whatever reason you just wanted to be like, you know what? Let me reach the as close to the halfway point as I can, I would suggest trying to get to the summon ticket. I would still probably go even further and go 2.2. I would probably go 2.5. Actually, I'm bad to ask this. I would say get all of it if you can. <laughs> but for whatever reason, summoning tickets are related to the banner. So obviously people are going to want that over a lot of the other stuff. So 1.75 million. But again, my suggestion is get everything. So start early, start grinding, get, get going. And here's the expedition mechanics. So like I said, I don't know. I don't think they specifically talk about which ones do better here. There'll probably be a guide out there that will tell you about it. But in terms of what you can send out for them, here's what you can get. Uh, for Prairie, if you have a Heroes Proof, you have a chance to send someone out. Eight hours. Oh, they have the compatibilities right here. So there we go. They have eight hours. You can get a Chain of the Fools and 2,000 Ruffian Points. For the forest, give a bone. Get an arrow. For the mountain, give a magatama. Get a 8, 5 EXP. In Castletown, give them an antiquity bell. Get a magatama. Uh, get a cave. Give a lantern. Get an iron stake. And remember, you will get these back after the expedition is done. Give an Idrisil seal. Get a permafrost ice crystal. Give a chain. Give an Idrisil seed. Give a permafrost... Get Scarab of Wisdom. Give a Giant's Ring. Get 3 million QP. Okay. Uh, someone who is constantly a, has, <laughs> who has like 400 of all material but never enough QP. That interests me a lot. Volcano. Give him a Don Re like, uh, <laughs> Light Reactor Core. Get a Giant's Ring. Give him an Iron Stake. Give him a Leyline Spiritron. Give him a Forbidden Page. Get some Fluid. Give them a pot, Give the, get a godly wine, give them some mirror, get the demonic flame Hazoki, give them a scarab of wisdom, and you can get the dragon's reverse scale. And as you can see, every single one of these doggos have different one to go for, so I would look over them, probably go through it and see here. There's a lot to go through. I don't know enough. When I don't know the dog's names, it makes it just seem like a bunch of reactions. But this would probably be a good page to hold up. But I assume there will be better guides out there that will have, like, a visual. A lot of the time, the people on... Someone on the Reddit does it a whole bunch where they'll just tell you, like, Hey, here you go. Here's a handy chart that you can just look at instead of just going over here and looking at the dogs and stuff like that. But there you go. Uh, there will be a challenge quest. A summon campaign. Okay. Now we can talk about the summon campaign. Oh, wait, and then there will also be a broadcast, which we already have been announced. So we'll get that, and we'll probably get some same courts. There will be a login bonus. 70,000 retweets has been reached, so all players will probably <laughs> 14 same courts. So we'll have an ability to get 14 same courts. Let's hope we're actually able to get them. And then, yeah, obviously the reveals. Oh, yeah, they'll show off some of the f anniversary stuff. Oh, is this where they got the giant Cernos plush? I didn't, I didn't remember that. I, oh man, they should release the giant Serenos plush for us. For us? It's only at the cons. I gotta go. I gotta get my ass to anime convention if I want giant Serenos, and then I have to get there early. Man. All right, now let's look at the summon campaign. We got on the docket 
Um, there'll be three banners. I'll only be looking at the first one, but if you want to know the other ones, this one will feature Tomatoma uh, along with the other ones. I'll do something closer to Tomatoma when he actually comes close to being released legitimately. Um, and this other one which triggers Hokusai, which is three days later, and I will also do the same for Hokusai when it comes closer to that. But for right now, we're just going to focus on Biken, Lobo, and Izzo. Um, starting with... Oh, and here are the Craft Seas. So the Craft Seas, usually they're not anything special, but I can look at them real quick. Mount Fuji, Pilgrimage, Star Regen, the plus three turns, Arch, uh, plus eight percent, MP Overcharge, plus two, stage one time. Uh, Fortress of the Sword, Start Stars, plus ten. Ooh, would be good for anyone who does not have an actual good star getting thingy. Uh, as I learned recently, not everyone just has Golden Catches the car <laughs> at three like I do. Quick plus three and Buster plus three. And Brave Warriors of the Prairie. Oh, this is some great art. This is some fantastic. I love it when the good art is on the three C. Cause who doesn't look at that dog? Look at them. This is beautiful. This is the, the probably the best CE that has ever featured Lobo in it. Now that I think about it, um, I love Lobo. I love Haitian Lobo. I love both of them. I wish they were maybe a little bit better of a unit. Anyway, start with Izzo. Izzo was an assassin. Uh, he has two quicks, two arts, one buster. His first skill is Manslayer. It increases own damage against humanoid enemies for one turn. And then increases on crit damage for one turn, 100% versus humanoid, and crit damage up 30% on the cooldown of 5. Second skill is Eye of the Mind, False C, grants self-evasion for one turn, increases own crit damage for three turns. The crit damage up is 32% on the cooldown of 6. His third skill is Swift and Powerful as a Falcon A, increases own crit star absorption for one turn, 500% on the cooldown of 3. His one passive skill is Presence Concealment B. His third append skill is an Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude. And his double phantasm, which he gets after the strengthening, is the Shimatsuken, the Settlement Sword, Anti-Unit Mystic Sword, which is a arts, hits four times, deals damage to one enemy. At MP level 1, it's 1,200, and if you get him to MP level 5, it's 1,800. The overcharge effect is increase on crit star generation rate for three turns, activates first, and then deals a extra damage to man attributes, which is what I think got added for this one. It is. Um... At charge level 1, the star rate is 100%, and at the final charge level, it's 200%. His versus man extra damage is 150% at level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final overcharge, it's 200%. And he has, like, multiple costumes. He has two costumes. Okay, fair enough. This costume right here, and then this costume, and I would almost bet that there would be more costumes for him in the future. And in general, he already had three cool costumes. So, do just is kitted out with some great outfits here actually though yeah i think actually he has like every single one of them is good i like this one yeah april fools is not an actual costume but i always liked his like hobo samurai look at this one i think it's really good these other ones they're like too clean this is too edgy for me but this one right here hobo samurai that's my favorite anyway that's his though Izzo is a very good unit um, for an assassin for a 3-star. The only problem with Izzo is that he is a limited 3-star. And typically he only shows up for Gouda Gouda. What does it mean to be a limited 3-star? It means pain. Because that means that you're not going to have very easy access to coins. Which a lot of 3-stars have typically very easy access to a pen skills. Uh, Izzo actually, <laughs> it's going to cost you a lot. Um... Because it's still, funny enough, very hard to pull a featured 3-star unit. If you want proof of that, go check out my Trom summons where I did two multis. Um, didn't get a single Zhangju. I was able to get um, Moriarty and Don Quixote. Uh, and, um, yeah, no, those were the only two featured. On no, and someone else, I think. It can't be the only two. Is my, I'm pretty sure there was three. Anyway, maybe my mind is just blanked. Point is, is that across everything, I was never able to pull the three star. And this can be true for a lot. Actually, it took me a lot to get my Izzo um, to MP level five. My Izzo's MP level five, and it was not easy to get him to MP level five. So it really kind of depends on your luck. 
It usually it's not the end all be all because not a lot of people care about um, three stars. But I'll say that Inso is a very popular three star, <laughs> which makes it very annoying for a lot of things. So you have to kind of pick and choose. I w my suggestion is always don't go chasing Izzo. Go chasing for a unit and then be happy when you get a Izzo. Because if you're only going to be chasing Izzo, your luck is always going to make it so that you get everything but Izzo. <laughs> it's just the way of the world, unfortunately. It's the way gacha luck just runs. And in terms of his actual abilities, like I said, I think he's solid. This is a very simple skill. It's a cooldown of three though, so it can come back pretty quickly. So that's nice. This is another very simple skill where it's, yeah, it's a one turn evasion, but the crit damage up for three turns is okay. And again, cooldown of six, the fact that it's tied to that. He really does a lot of damage for a single turn and then that's it. That was actually probably the problem with him aging over time. So he does a lot of damage and he does it a lot to humanoid enemies. But he only does it once, and then he kind of doesn't do much afterwards. Uh, he has enough arts cards to kind of keep him going, but that's typically what he is, is that he has one big turn. So this bonus of 150% can help a whole bunch. And then considering that he has arts, that means you can also be run with Castoria, and it's pretty easy for Castoria to shoot up her NP first, and then you can use him for the overcharge too. At least that's the way I would see it. And again, this is just a specific team build. And the way you want to use Izzo is obviously you want to fight against someone with a man attribute. And there's plenty of dudes in the man attribute. There's plenty of dudes in the man. Look at all these dudes. There's a lot of dudes in the man attribute. Um, so yeah, that's Izzo. Best of luck to you if you're trying for him. Um, especially if you're someone who's actually trying to get all the medals and stuff. That must be a nightmare. I don't even. I don't think I even have mine at max of that stuff at least i don't think so if i had to check again but i'm pretty sure i don't anyway haitian lobo he's an avenger he has two quicks two arts one buster his first skill is the fallen demon a plus increases his own crit star absorption for one turn and then increases his defense for a single turn the absorption is 1240 percent to the defense on a cooldown of five his second skill which is the one that gets buffed is the homesick white wolf increase on attack for three turns and then increase own damage against enemies with the man attributes for three turns. So there's a bad time to be a man. The attack up is 30% and the man the man damage is 30% and the cooldown of 5. Previously, I believe this is a two turn 30% attack up. So it's better, especially if you're fighting someone of the man. One cloaked in death A reduces one enemy's instant kill resistance, resistance for one turn, reduces their attack for one turn, and then removes their buffs. Uh, death resistance is 50%, the attack down is 30%, and the obviously it removes their buffs. Cooldown of 5, passive skills, Avenger A, Oblivion Correction B, Self Replenishing Magic B. His third pen skill is an anti-alter ego attack damage aptitude. In his rank C, Noble Phantasm, which he gets after the interlude, is the Freyren Schriter, Execution of the Far Away One. Rank C+, Anti-Unit, hits 8 times, it's quick. Ignores evasion for a single turn, activates first. Increases on crit damage by 20% for three turns, activates first. I don't know why it would, because this is a noble phantasm, but whatever. I mean, there is someone who I think has a noble phantasm that crits. Deals damage to one enemy, 1,600 MP level 1, 2,400 at MP level 5. And then chance to instant kill them at charge level 1 at 60%. And if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it is 100%. Here's the note. Uh, an overclocked 5 instant kill always succeeds against mob enemies with, that have 100% death rate, basically bronze rarities. So your kill chance kind of changes depending on some stuff, but that's your your kill things. And that's, uh, that's Haitian Lobo. Um, I always thought it was kind of a bummer that he lost. So if you've never played the story that... Uh, Haitian Lobo came from. Haitian Lobo is supposed to have the Invisible Man on him, and I think they make mention of it in his lore stuff. Um, they say that it's inactive, and that's a shame, because he does not have any form of protection on him whatsoever. Um, the one protection he has is the ability to reduce their attack for one, like one turn, <laughs> and then remove their buffs, then give them an instant kill resistance. Which is alright, but here's the problem. For the most part, in, when it comes to single target servants, you're going to be putting them in events where they're going to be fighting against the boss, and most bosses can't be insta-killed. 
So that would mean that you would need to wait for a very specific challenge that needs an Avenger that also has an instant kill kind of gimmick to it, which would be extremely effective. And that just isn't enough for him. The ability to remove buffs is really nice, but this definitely feels like it's better on Haitian Lobo as an enemy and not actually when it's in your hands, but it is still a very nice skill to have. Um, I like Lobo's design. I like a lot about Lobo. Uh, I just don't think Lobo is gonna cut it in a lot of instances. I've tried over the years to get something out of Lobo, and I've never been able to do much with Lobo. Um... Let me see if I can very quickly see anyone else saying anything else about Lobo. Because it's very possible that it's just, a, frankly, a skill issue on my part, and I'm just bad at the game. I will always admit when there's a when it's a problem with me <laughs> when and not the unit. Sometimes I'm glad when it's a problem with me and not the unit. But no, it seems like, for the most part, not a lot of, pe a lot of people are like, yeah, Lobo, man. Which is a shame, because again, the fact that he is the a combination of Lobo and the Haitian is really cool. It's a composite unit that is like two spooky ass dudes. He looks fucking rad as hell. Like he's a giant wolf with a ho head with the headless horseman on his back. You're telling me that he's not one of the best <laughs> units in the game? That's so sad. That's so incredibly sad. I gotta look away. Haitian Lobo, though, that's them. They're also not limited, so probably not worth going for. Um, and then we have Bakken, who is a writer, and she is limited. Uh, Bakken is a writer, like I said beforehand. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her active skills are the name speaks for itself, B. Charges on MP gauge, charges party's MP gauge except for self by 10%, and then gains some crit stars. 30% to herself. And uh, 15 crit stars on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is 8 Benevolence and Righteousness. A increases one ally's quick performance. Arts performance, buster performance, crit damage, and MP damage for 3 turns. Then recovers their HP. And then grant them an evasion from 1 attack 3 turns. And then grant them debuff immunity for 1 time 3 turns. The quick, the arts, the buster, and the crit, and the MP damage are all 20%. And the heal is 1000 on a cooldown of 6. Um, absorbed in writing A, increases his own arts performance for 3 turns, grants self buff on attack buff for 3 turns, increases his party's attack by 5% for 3 turns when attacking with the arts cards, um, 30% to arts attack damage is right here, uh, it's pretty nice actually, that's a very cool kind of buff, I did not know she did that, and then finally her 3 passive skills are writing B, magic resistance B, and divinity C, her third skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude, and her noble phantasm is the Nanso Satami Hakaden, the Eight Dog Chronicles. Rank A, anti-unit, arts noble phantasm. Increases own damage against demonic enemies by 30% for one turn, activates first. Deals damage to all enemies. Gain eight crit stars. <laughs> Just eight. Which is funny because it's the Eight Dog Chronicles, so it makes sense. You get every, Each dog is giving you a single crit star. Um, and yeah, deals damage to all enemies. The damage up is 450% uh, at MP level 1, and if you get her to MP level 5, it is 750%. And then she deals extra damage against enemies with the evil alignment, which is 150% uh, at level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 200%. And that is Bakken. Bakken seems like a really cool unit. I would say she's pretty solid. The one thing that's kind of always a thing that I have to talk about whenever I see... Uh, writers and specifically arts writers that are AOE is that typically some of the better arts writers at AOE uh, specifically are very good at their job so you have to really stand out and do something kind of different from them to kind of take into consideration at least that's how I feel a lot of the time and I think she does something that completely different from the others that um, makes it worth using like obviously the fact that she has, obviously she's AoE, so the thing, the main thing you have to realize is like, oh yeah, she can probably loop. I think she hits, hits like uh, four times, and she's arts, and she has a 30% way to give her herself NP gauge. She should. Unless she's just absolutely trash at gaining NP, she should be able to get that no problem. <laughs> and loop with double Castoria. But the thing that she does after that is also interesting, because there's also ways to use her if you're not someone who wants to always use a unit for looping. 
there's way to use her in actual kind of single kind of combat kind of ways, maybe some more challenging kind of ways. Because she is able to get crit stars 15. And I laughed at 15, but the fact that she gets 8 every time she noble phantasms is cool. Um, the, the second skill being able to target anyone is really nice. That means that you can use this to save someone, you can use it offensively, you can use it to be specifically to grant them debuff immunity as well. And the fact that this is all on like, you can even use it to heal them a little bit. And obviously it doesn't give a lot of many of them, like obviously it's not the best quick arts buster crit damage and MP damage up, or even the best heal, but the fact that it does all of that and gives them an evasion and debuff, debuff immunity one time for three turns is pretty nice. And this is on a cooldown of six. <laughs> It's not bad. Some some older units have skills like this, and it costs them like on a cooldown of like nine. <laughs> Somehow, like they don't even do half the things mentioned here, and it's worth a lot. Um, the third skill, which is absorbed in writing, a I actually really like the idea of like oh yeah, every time you just um, uh, every time you attack with her, you're also buffing the party just a little bit more when you're doing it with an arts card. And she has her AoE, which is, I think, uh, which is an arts card, and then she has two arts cards here, so it should be able to be possible. Would have been nice probably to use it with all, but I think it still works out with this. So that would mean on a perfect turn, if you were to use them all, you would be able to give the party up 15% from using three arts cards, which is pretty nice. And this is also assuming that, uh, I guess it lives after you use it or something. <laughs> so I think this is a really cool unit, actually. I didn't know that she did any of this. Um, is it worth going after and chasing? Uh, I mean, if you already like Bike Bakken and you've already planned it out for yourself, I say, yeah, go for it. I wish you the best of luck. Um, if you're not, our uh, anniversary is obviously coming pretty soon in five weeks or so. Um, yeah, five weeks. Let me do a quick check. I do every video one, two, three, four, five weeks in a single day as of this recording. So... With that in mind, even though she is really cool, unless you're just super grabbed by the character, which is something I honestly don't know that much about, I'm looking forward to doing the event. And there have been plenty of times where I didn't have an interest in a character, did the event, and then I went, oh man, I really like this character now. I have to go back and try. That could be a case for Bakken for sure, but I do kind of like a lot of the kind of like setup she's got. She got the dogs. She's got like a cool dog. Like she's got a lot of cool stuff going on here. It's just that you have to remember what's coming up, man. <laughs> it's going to be really rough. So hard times require hard decision making this time. So I can't make that decision for you. But as always, I will say, please be responsible with what you're doing. Um, if you have the stuff to afford to try and go for it, go for it. Especially if you're someone who... Obviously, if you also don't need an AoE arts writer, then don't go for it. <laughs> If you don't need any of this stuff, the answer is pretty obvious. You just don't summon. But there you go. I figure I need to mention it. Sometimes I think, like, I don't need to mention that because everyone knows it. And then someone who's new is like, I didn't know that. What do I do? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned it. But yeah, that's Bakken. And that's what this event is looking like. Um, so she'll release on the 6th. And then next week will come Tamatoma. And then three days from that will be... Um, Hokusai, and then from there, we have more fun coming for us in terms of Kama and a bunch of other cool things to do. Man, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for more waiting. It's going to be an excruciating five weeks of waiting um, and thinking and deliberating and just kind of waiting and sitting down, doing a lot of the things that I have to do to make sure that before anniversary shows up and stuff like that. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it all the way here at the end. As always, you can leave a like and comment. It does help out the channel a bunch. And uh, subscribe. Yes, I mentioned that. Watch other videos. I do other stuff. I remember occasionally to upload those videos. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.